put it mildly, these are turbulent political times. Um, the challenge of Brexit is unprecedented. So today I just wanted to set out six main themes indicating how Labour would deliver a progressive future partnership with the EU. The first theme or proposition is this, uh, and I think it's pretty uncontroversial. The Brexit negotiations are at a critical stage already. Um, the negotiations are not going well, and that again is not a controversial statement. It's now eight months since Article 50 was triggered. It's 17 months since the referendum, and perhaps the most important date, it's 16 months until the expiry of the Article 50 notification. Uh, yet there's no agreement yet on any of the Phase 1 issues. The referendum result on the 23rd of June gave us one answer to one question. Do you want to leave or do you want to remain in the EU? It didn't tell us anything else. It told us nothing about how you might leave the EU if the answer was to leave. And much more importantly, it told us nothing about what a future relationship with the EU might look like over the next half century. It was open to a number uh, of interpretations. The Prime Minister could have adopted an approach that sought to bring the country back together, a careful, conciliatory approach. An approach that on the one hand recognised and respected the referendum and the causes that lay behind why people had voted as they had. But also an approach that respected the 48% and what they voted for. And I think over the months since the referendum, there's been a growing anxiety amongst those that voted to remain, that somehow they're being treated as if they're written out of their own future, uh, that what they care about doesn't count for the next generation. But the Prime Minister didn't adopt that approach at her 2016 conference. She adopted an interpretation which was out of the single market, out of the customs union, nothing to do with a European Court of Justice or any court apart from our own courts, out of all the associations and agencies of the EU. And she used that phrase, and I quote, if you're a citizen of the world, you're a citizen of nowhere. That was an extreme interpretation of the question that was posed on the 23rd of June last year. It's about as extreme as you could possibly um, have got. It immediately alienated our EU partners. I went to Brussels the week after that speech, and it was clear that they were taken aback uh, by that interpretation of the referendum result. There has to be now an early commitment to deliver strong transitional arrangements. No ambiguity. I've always believed it's fanciful to suggest that the UK and the EU could negotiate, ratify and implement a meaningful new relationship within the two-year Article 50 period. The chances obviously are even lower now that we're missing deadlines. I made it clear that we needed to negotiate strong transition arrangements on the same basic terms as we currently have. And I spelled out that that means for a time-limited period, Britain would be within the single market, in a customs union, accepting the common rules of both uh, and the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. I believe that that sort of transitional arrangement could be agreed fairly quickly with the EU and it would deliver a number of very clear benefits for Britain. It would, of course, remove the danger of a cliff edge in March 2019. So let me conclude in this way. By abandoning the Prime Minister's heavy red lines laid out over a year ago, by being clear that we accept common standards and don't wish to deregulate, Labour would start Brexit negotiations in a fundamentally different place to the current government. That would not make negotiation easy, but it would make it easier. We have an incredibly weak government. I can't think of a period in time where a government had been this week so early in the parliamentary five-year cycle. We're only six months into a five-year parliament. Labour has to stand ready to take over. And if that were to happen, 
we would reset the negotiations. 